So once you've installed your batteries, your motor, and your controller, you're ready to go with cabling everything up. But you don't want to use just any cable. You want to use welding cable. Welding cable is great stuff. It's very flexible because it's made up of lots of little tiny strands of copper. You're also going to want to make sure that you use thick enough cable for this application. We're going to be pulling a lot of amperage through the system to push you down the road on that motorcycle. So you're going to need some nice thick cable to help get you there. So what thickness or what gauge cable do you need? Well, just in a nutshell, a uh, four gauge or thicker will work for you. But keep in mind that gauge is kind of a weird way of measuring things. The bigger number, the skinnier the wire. Like 16 gauge cable is pretty skinny stuff. Four gauge is pretty thick. One gauge is even thicker. And believe it or not, it'll go down to zero. Once it gets to zero, thicker than that is zero zero or two aught. Uh, I've seen cable as thick as four aught. That's pretty thick, heavy stuff. You don't need anything quite that big for a motorcycle. Four gauge will be great. Uh, two gauge would also be uh, just fine, but at some point the cable is going to start costing you a lot of money. Now that said, you don't need that many feet of cable, so make sure you spend the money and you get the good stuff. Uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is cut the cable to length. Um, but that might be a little complicated because you're not always going in a straight line. You might need to go around a battery or follow the frame of the motorcycle, something like that. So what I like to use is a real tape measure. Um, it's a flexible tape measure, so you can measure around the frame of the cycle or around a battery, whatever you need to do. Uh, also, a Taylor's flexible tape measure would work very well. Or if you don't have either of those, uh, just a piece of rope or string, something like that, and then you can use your traditional tape measure or even a yardstick or something like that to measure how long it needs to be. So when you know how long your cable needs to be, you can cut it to length. Um, but not just any cutter is going to work because this stuff's pretty thick, pretty heavy. A couple different ways to do it. One is with the bolt cutter. Uh, this 14 inch bolt cutter is actually uh, just the perfect size for cutting this stuff. The other tool I actually really love is this uh, old Craftsman Handy Cut. Um, I believe this has been replaced by the Sears Robo Cutter, which is also a great tool. But basically, it's a single sharp blade. It's replaceable, and it cuts against this flat plastic anvil. It makes a nice clean cut, um, and it works great on this type of cable. Just make sure that you cut at 90 degrees so you have a good square end on your cable when you're all done. Now, before you do anything to the end of your cable, you might right away want to slip on a little heat shrink tubing. It doesn't have to be real long just long enough to cover uh, that half of your terminal and enough to stick over the end of the cable as well. So we'll put that on there. Now, if instead of a typical lug like this, you were gonna put a big, uh, like an automotive clamp on, uh, you may also at this time want to put on any type of boot that's gonna go over that. Uh, for some of those larger clamping connectors, this is impossible to get on once you've got that connector on the end. Uh, with just a plain lug like this, not as big of a deal, but you do want to make sure to put that shrink wrap on right away. Now, also keep in mind with this lug that uh, besides the size cable it's designed for, the hole that's in it comes in a number of different sizes. You do want to match that with the size of the bolt or battery terminal that's going to be going through there. You're going to get a better connection, and if the hole is too big, um, you can actually pull lead through there, which is not what you want to do. That can damage the battery over time. So I know with this cable, I'm going to use a side terminal connector. And if I just check that, that's just about the right size for that. Just perfect. So all I need to do, slide the terminal onto the end of the cable. Make sure to get all those little tiny wires in there. Give it a little twist first, usually helps. Gently slide that on. And now we need to crimp it into position. Now this is a cable crimper that will handle up to four aught cable. This will go uh, to some pretty thick cable. I borrowed this from my friend Rich. 
But if you're not rich, I might recommend that you borrow one of these from somewhere or possibly even rent one from a full service hardware store as this is a rather expensive tool. Another option is that there are some hydraulic crimpers available now. Uh, Costs a little bit less money. You can get them at places like Harbor Freight Tools, for example. Basically, it's a little bottle jack with uh, interchangeable jaws. Uh, for example, here is a uh, zero gauge, and what's in here right now is the four gauge. Uh, you just tighten the hydraulic there, and then you pump away, and that'll squeeze your connector right on there, and then it's spring-loaded, and it pops back open when you're done. Uh, both these types of connectors work great. This one may be a little bit more readily available to you as this one uh, is kind of hard to find and it's a little pricey. But this is already set up for the four gauge. So let's just crimp this. And when I do that, I'm gonna make sure that the copper is pushed up into the end there, nice and solid. Okay, so I've got my crimp, and then I'll just slide that heat shrink back up, and then we'll hit that with a little heat. So now we've got a pretty nice looking connection right on there. Only other thing we might want to check is uh, some, some batteries have a different size connection for positive versus negative. If so, you want to make sure to use the lug with the correct size hole for either end. And then in that case, you would also want to mark it as negative or positive, uh, probably with some colored electrical tape or maybe just a little uh, small piece of uh, colored heat shrink to mark that as well. So do the same thing to the other end and then do uh, make up the rest of your cables for the project. Uh, cable it all up, make sure your fasteners are torqued and that all the terminals are covered, that you have a rubber boot or some other means of uh, covering up all the ends, and your project is all cabled up.